Okay, so let's do a couple more examples. So example four says, for a specific year, the average score on the SAT math test was 515. The variable is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is 100. The same superintendent in the previous example wishes to see if her students scored significantly below the national average on the test. She randomly selected 36 student scores as shown. Alpha is 0.1. Is there enough evidence to support the claim? Okay, so I'm going to go through those same five steps. So step one, we're going to state our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, that's going to get the equal to sign. So we'll say that mu equals 515. Okay, that's what they tell us that the average is. And then for your alternative, H1, uh, let's see, you'll kind of get used to looking for our little keywords here. So it says uh, she wishes to see if her students scored below the national average. Okay, so her claim is that she thinks mu is less than 515. Okay, so we're going to label that one as the claim. Step two is to figure out our critical value. So you just have to use that list of common critical values that I gave you, identify what alpha is, they'll tell you that in the problem, so point 0.1, and then to figure out what tailed test this is, you just have to look at the sign of the alternative hypothesis. So since it's a less than sign, that tells you that it's a left tailed test. So looking at that um, list of values, you'll see that the critical value is negative 1.28. Okay, step three, we have to figure out what our test value is. Now, in order to use that formula for um, the test value, we have to know what X bar is, okay, or the sample mean. So you'll notice they didn't tell us what that is in the question, uh, but they did give us a list of the raw data. So what you wanna do is go ahead and put all of those values into a list in your calculator. So if you wanna do that, um, go ahead and pause this so that you can take some time and put all those in. Um, I'm just gonna continue on though. So once you have all of those in a list, then you're gonna go to one variable stats, and of course tell it what list to use. So for me, I would do one variable stats L1, and then at the top of those stats, it's gonna tell you what X bar is. Now, one thing I wanna caution you here is don't round too much when you jot down what your sample mean is. So in fact, I wouldn't do less than three decimal places. If you do less than that, you're risking um, throwing off your final answer. So I think this one came out to be like 509.027777. So I went ahead and I rounded it to 509.028. If you wanna do more than three, just to be careful, you can definitely do that. Okay, so once you know what your sample mean is, then we can plug into our test value formula. So Z is gonna be equal to the sample mean minus the population mean, so 509.028 minus 515, and then you divide by sigma divided by the square root of N. So sigma tells us in the question is 100, and then N is gonna be 36 because there are 36 uh, student scores in that sample. So we'll have 100 divided by the square root of 36. And then when you type that in your calculator, just make sure that you put parentheses around the entire numerator and the entire denominator. And then we'll round our z value to two decimal places. So you should get negative 0.36. Okay, step four, you'll draw your normal distribution curve. Um, let's see, well, um, I always start with identifying the critical value. So critical value is negative 1.28. And then since this is a left-tailed test, we're gonna shade to the left there. So that shading indicates the rejection region. So now we wanna compare where our test value is. So our Z value is negative 0.36. Okay, so negative 0.36 is a larger number than negative 1.28. So I know it has to be somewhere on the right side. So maybe I'll label it there. So negative 0.36. Um, but the point is that negative 0.36 
um, is not in the rejection region. Okay, it's in this non-rejection region area, so the non-shaded area. Okay, so since it is not in the rejection region, then that tells us that our decision is going to be that we do not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject the null. And then step five, we're just going to summarize our results using that summary table. So you'll identify that the claim is in the alternative. And then we said that we do not reject the null. So that means that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the student scored below the national average. Okay, so let's do one more example. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of it and you see that it's not too bad. So example five says that the Medical Rehab Education Foundation reports that the average cost of uh, rehabilitation for stroke victims is $24,672. To see if the average cost of rehab is different at a particular hospital, a researcher selects a random sample of 35 stroke victims uh, at the hospital and finds that the average cost of their rehab is $26,343. The standard deviation of the population is 3,251. Alpha is 0.01. Can it be concluded that the average cost of stroke rehab at a particular hospital is different from 24,672? Okay, so same five steps. So step one is to state our hypotheses. So our null hypothesis, H naught, we'll say that mu equals 24,672. And then for your, your alternative hypothesis, so you'll just kind of read the question again. And, and here we can see that it says that we are interested in just figuring out if the average cost is different from that. So since it doesn't give a particular direction as far as like greater than or less than or decrease or increase, um, we're just going to use a not equal to sign. So we'll say that the claim is that mu is not equal to 24,672. Okay, step two is to get our critical value. So alpha is 0.01, and then this is going to be a two-tailed test since the sign of the alternative hypothesis is not equals to. And then from that list of common critical values, you'll see that they are going to equal um, plus or minus 2.58. So when it's a two-tailed test, you're going to have two critical values. Okay, step three is to just use our test value formula for the z-test. So we'll have z equals, so it's the sample mean. So if you read the question, it says that the average cost um, of that sample was the 26,343. And then we'll subtract mu, which was the 24,672, divide that by the population standard deviation of 3,251, which we're dividing by the square root of n, so the square root of 35. Okay, you'll put that in your calculator carefully with parentheses around the entire numerator and the entire denominator. Um, round your z-value to two decimal places, and that'll come out to be 3.04. Okay, then step four, uh, we'll just put our critical values on our normal distribution curve. So we have negative 2.58 and positive 2.58. And this is a two-tailed test. So we have two rejection regions. We have one going off to the right and one going off to the left. Okay, and then we're just going to compare where our test value falls. So 3.04, um, let's see, I guess I didn't label it. 3.04 will definitely um, be bigger than 2.58. So that is going to fall in that rejection region off to the right there. So 3.04 is in the rejection region. And since it is in the rejection region, that means our decision is going to be that we reject the null hypothesis. And then step five, we'll summarize our results. So the null is, or I'm sorry, the claim is in the alternative hypothesis and we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So that tells us that we should 
um, where we'll say that there is enough evidence to support the claim that the average cost of rehab at the particular hospital is different from 24,672.